How's it going everyone, College Lefty, and in this video I'm going to be going over some of the brand new content that we're going to get a little bit later today, as well as some of the stuff that we got yesterday. I was kind of busy with a couple of meetings and preparation for some of those meetings, but let's go ahead and hide the face cam. We'll get right into this uh, gameplay and content. So as you all know, we uh, did have a brand new season reset yesterday. We have some brand new pennant race division rewards as well as World Series rewards so let's go ahead and display these cards we have a prime ryan klesko which is a pretty good card against righties i wouldn't really use him on defense there are plenty of other first basemen but if you have a budget team i would also recommend this brett boone uh, this card is more of a balanced player a little bit lower attributes against lefties but he does have diamond defense kind of like a budget sandberg in a way similar swing if i'm not mistaken but uh, this brand new world series reward chris sale is very good he is the exact same card as the one that we had last year if you guys go back and forth this is the same exact player card same attributes same pitch repertoire literally the exact same signature series chris sale card so that's pretty cool i never got a chance to really use that card last year and then of course we have this ricky henderson the one thing that they made a change to this ricky henderson is that they added one speed to him so he does have 99 speed when i posted this screenshot he had 98 some adjustments were made Anyway, we will have a brand new player program coming out in Brandon Phillips. I wasn't sure if this card was still in the game. I was kind of predicting uh, Tony Perez, but we do get a gold glove, Brandon Phillips, and this card will also give you uh, 20 program stars featured in the sixth inning program for some of those bosses. This is the signature series card that we had last year, but we can kind of assume that it will be a little bit lower overall because um, it's a gold glove card. But I was expecting this Tony Perez card. I know that he had an event card last year. As you can see, he was going for $1 million. And then, of course, his signature card. I thought that we might get him as a postseason, but I was mistaken. You have to admit when you're wrong in certain situations, and it's okay. I mean, I just posted that on Twitter. It's not like I made a video about that in general. But I was incorrect about that prediction. One prediction that we did get correct, though, is this future star Christian Pache as a part of the set 40 headliner card this is a 98 overall future star player and he will be very good i think he's going to have maxed out defense or 98 defense as well as uh, increased contact so for the remaining portion of this video we are going to get into some hitting tips we're also going to be getting into some event gameplay but this is something that i've kind of been doing um, in addition to some of the other hitting tips that i've released so one thing that you can do is increase the fastball pitch speed by two notches. I feel like any more is just overdoing it. Uh, we are going to be going up against Araldus Chapman on Legend in custom practice with the increased fastball pitch speeds. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some strategy involved with this. I'm going to talk about my PCI placement as we get into it as well. I'm going to use a couple different options. I'm going to be hitting lefty lefty mainly against Chapman. And we're going to be doing this at Capitol Field so that way we can kind of see the ball a little bit better than you would at ship it so uh, with that being said let's go ahead and get right into it some strategy involved with this we're going to make it a uh, batting play type of course we're going to repeat the play two balls and two strikes with two outs so that way when we're just initially tracking pitches with the pci we're going to you know work on setting it in different places sometimes we're going to set it inside sometimes we're going to move it to the outside i'm not going to take you guys through each and every uh, pitch thrown but I do want to take you through the idea behind this so right now I'm just training my brain to pick up the pitch out of the pitcher's hand and as you can see the fastball is really moving I mean he's throwing uh, 102 and it's coming in hot because we did increase the fastball pitch speed another thing to keep in mind is that the off-speed pitches are still coming in at the normal speed so we have to sit back on them but it makes them look a little slower because of the increased fastball so as you can see i'm just tracking some pitches after i've done this a while the confidence for the pitcher will go up and that's what i want i'm trying to sit on the inside i'm moving my pci a little bit to the right starting it there he has max out confidence his pitches are going to be moving um more they're going to he's going to be dotting up the strike zone a little bit more effectively as well just a lot of things that i talked about in my other advanced hitting tips videos in things of that nature i just wanted to uh, talk about how i've warmed up for world series or warmed up for rank seasons in general i don't typically do this if i'm gonna play on all-star but it still wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of just take you know a few pitches 
warm your brain up, warm your fingers up a little bit. And here we're using Reggie Jackson. So I did the same type of thing, just joined in with the bombers, actually the boomers, rather than the long ball beasts. So just a little bit of a difference there. Now we'll get into some event gameplay. This is on All-Star. So the PCI, the pitch speeds are definitely different in this gameplay now. But this definitely helps me uh, get better at the game. Even if you don't play on Legend, even if you've never played the game on that hard of a difficulty, it will still help you practice and get better while using zone hitting. Anyway, in this event, I matched up with a couple people that I that I knew. I mean, I recognized Killaby Killed's name. He also follows me on Twitter, and uh, he hit a home run there. I was trying to get a save with Blake Trinan, just trying to close it out, earn that save for that mission. I need two of those. But he ends up hitting a home run with Nolan Gorman to tie it up. This game went into extra innings. He's the home team, so we got to try and hold him. And honestly, in this game, I just didn't really hit that well in general. I mean, I was just off the ball. I was also swinging a little bit early at times. So just my timing was a little bit off. Uh, anyway, Mike Trout's been the only guy that's really got the offense going. The way we scored the run earlier was with Mike Trout after a Jimmy Rollins double. Uh, but here, I mean, we weren't able to capitalize and score this run. We weren't even able to advance him with less than two outs to third base, which is what we need. Even though we hit a perfect, perfect fly ball, even though I had a perfect timing with this, it was still, uh, I was still way too under it. I mean, it was not the correct launch angle for a no doubt home run, for even a home run at all, especially playing at this field. So uh, here in the next inning, I knew that he was going to get something going eventually. I mean, he gets a leadoff double with McCutcheon. And that's going to be enough speed to score on a base knock. We have one out after a big strikeout, I believe. And then he tries to advance on this play right here. So that was a, a big heads up play. He was almost safe even. 85 speed, almost beat that out. He got a great jump on that play. Luckily, we have Jimmy Rollins at shortstop working on prestiging that card. But then we go deep with Robinson Cano uh, to make it a 2-1 to one game. We ended up closing that one out with Bob Feller. A seven inning event game. That's normally supposed to be three innings. What a crazy game. Anyway, in this next one, Mike Trout goes deep with a two-run shot. That opponent ended up quitting out. We'll get into another one. And honestly, that's why I practice lefty-lefty is for situations like this. I mean, in my on my ranked team, I'm using quite a few lefties. A lot of people play that lefty-lefty matchup. And that's the thing that I have the toughest time hitting in this game, I would say. But the more I practice it, the more comfortable I feel hitting lefty-lefty in this game. And then... Honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm I'm hitting worse right-handed with right-handed batters against left-handed pitchers. So sometimes I try and practice that as well. Uh, for the most part, though, facing righties doesn't really mess me up. I also like to practice righty-righty, but righty-lefty is definitely my best matchup in terms of uh, hitting. And I know that personally. Everybody's different in this game. So you have to kind of approach the game in your best interest as well as to your strengths. So some people ask me, you know, why do you set up the PCI inside? And the reason for that, and I've talked about it, I went into a couple videos with some uh, slow motion PCI placement. I went into another video with the slow motion hand camera, or uh, I guess just hand camera in general. I think there were some slow motion clips in that video as well. But I've been asked the question of why I place my PCI inside or even outside with a right-handed hitter. I just think that it feels the best for me to have the stick a little bit to the right or set to the right. I can kind of move it from there and I can, I, I've can just done it that way for so long that it feels most comfortable for me and it also helps me hit that inside pitch, cheat on that inside pitch. As you can see though, I mean, I'm moving the PCI to the opposite side if I see that it's going outside. You have a little bit more time to react to the outside pitch but you also have to try and go with it. So sometimes it can mess me up as well. I can go into a slump because I'm not moving the PCI all the way to the outside. I'm only moving it back to the middle, which is not going to help me on those outside pitches. So there are some things that you know I have to keep in mind. I'm still not you know a robot when it comes to this game. I don't always have good swings. I get into some slumps and I use these types of hitting tips to kind of break out of those slumps or at least practice a little bit to help me get better at the game if I am struggling a little bit if I'm doing some stupid things I know recently uh, the main thing that I've had trouble with is hitting with runners in scoring position I'm just getting too aggressive 
and I'm swinging at you know swinging at bad pitches, striking out on check swings, uh, getting check swings to be put in play uh, for outs that are are non-productive. So really just understanding the situation in the game as well as understanding how the game plays some randomness that will take place and uh, kind of how to approach the game as i'm playing it so uh, a lot of the pitches that i'm hitting though in this video for a home run are over the middle of the plate that's exactly what i'm looking for i'm looking for mistake pitches people are going to hang them i know i'm going to hang them right down the middle so i'm expecting to hit those as well but that's going to do it for this one hopefully i helped you out in some way peace out